Nigel, mate, since you've uh, since you've had a rest, mate, why don't we why don't we get you going nice and early? Uh, okay. Newcastle and Aston Villa, mate, you've got something here that you are enjoying. Well, I, I touched on it there. I mean, last weekend in the Premier League, I mean, I might as well just paint that wall there and just sit watching it. Some of the games were just, oh, they were dreadful, weren't they? And the worst game of football I've seen for probably this season for a long, long time was Wolves against Aston Villa. I mean, oh, it, was, it, it was absolutely terrible. After five minutes, you knew it was going to be nil-nil. You know, it was, it was, it was just so, so, such one of the worst games I've seen in, in the Premier League. Um, and I feel that the, the Premier League this weekend, we're going to get a lot of unders again, as we've seen the trend in the recent weeks. I, I do, I do sort of mention it quite a bit, but it's it's going to be quite wet and windy across England in, in the uh, in the weekend in this weekend, which a lot of people don't actually factor in. But I work for um, for a very uh, back, back in the day, I worked for an Italian uh, bookmaker, and um, the guy was a huge punter. The first sort of eight, before age when the Asian betting market first come out in, in, in around about 1994, 93, that kind of era. And this guy was just huge. And all he wanted to know was the weather forecast. It was like the most important thing. And he, went, he, was, a, he was a multi, multi, multi-millionaire over the time. But some people joke about the weather forecast. Well, I think the wind is a huge factor. There's going to be very, very high winds, especially in the lower levels of England. League one, league two, playing with high winds. I think the, 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 that will affect some of the unders. But, but regardless of the weather, I think that's one point. The second thing is these two sides are dreadful. You know, Newcastle, their, their goal XG is absolutely useless. Aston Villa without Jack Greenish have just really not created as many chances. Um, Newcastle without Callum Wilson. They're without um, uh, um, Almiron, who, who's, who's got all the legs for them. And they're out some maximum as well. So you take those three side t- teams out, players out of that Newcastle side, where are they going to score the goals from? They're not going to score the goals from. That's the problem. When they played at West Brom at the weekend, it was nil-nil again. Villa drew nil-nil at the weekend. And uh, the top goal scorer on the start at 11 was uh, Hendricks, who got two goals. So that's the problem Newcastle has. Also, Newcastle know that they're in a relegation battle now after what Fulham have done. And Steve Bruce will go into a game like this, thinking, let's just not get beat. He'll be looking to draw games nil-nil. He knows he can't score goals, because so the only way he can do is defend. And then they'll try to get a game when they can win a game. If you look at their records uh, without Sam Maxim in, in the Premier League this season, it's shocking. He doesn't score goals, but he's, he's really influential to them. And, and without him, they never win. And Aston Villa have got a, have got a pretty poor record without Jack Greedish. Without the creativity of Jack Greedish, I can't see where, where they're going to score. I know Ollie Watkins is, he can score goals and uh, Hamadi and all this, but I think Greedish is obviously their main man. And given that, they've got one of the best defences in the Premier League. They've got, in my opinion, definitely the best goalkeeper in the Premier League in the last half of the season, or from you know from what I've seen. You know, I wouldn't say he's the best goalkeeper, but he, he's been a, a revelation since he's gone to Aston Villa. And they're very, very hard to break down. A lot of teams will find it really hard. The unders have gone in in pretty much all the Villa's recent games for the last five. Newcastle, you know, without those three players, and you can get four to five, which is one point eight um, under two and a half goals. Which I was expecting, given the amount of unders we've had in the Premier League. I thought this game would probably be about about 1.66, 1.7. They've both got very low uh, goal XGs, um, and they're without uh, all of the, all both sides are without their most creative players. So it's a no-brainer for me under under two and a half goals tomorrow night. Yeah, I'm just getting up the odds here, uh, courtesy of. Trade, mate. It's actually a value bet right now, mate. So you've picked that nicely under two and a half goals uh, at Bet Chris and SBO Bet if you've got access to them. But yeah, I'm just looking at Pinnacle now, and they're already at 1.72. So yeah, there's a couple places now that you can uh, snap up some value. So you wouldn't go lower than 1.8, Nigel? Well, I, I backed it at 1.81 this morning with. Um... Bet, well, for Betfair, wouldn't and uh, and um, on the fixed odds, it was about one point seven five, and I thought one point seven five was a bet. Um, anything under that, I probably wouldn't bet it. But one point seven point five would probably be the lowest I would go. But just the way that just the way that Luke are on the Bruce, and now that he's got his back against the wall, and now he's he, the, the, the fear factor of Newcastle get relegated is is just so much. He won't risk anything. You know, he would rather get. 
10 nil nil draws from now to the end of the season to get 10 yeah, points yeah. Rather, rather than win a game 4 nil. It's just the way he is set up as a manager. I just, I just think, it's, I think it's a cracking bet. And without Grish, obviously, you know, uh, and they also got cash back as well, Villa. They were um, cash back. Let's see that. You know, but um, <laughs> cash, back, yeah, yeah. cash is returning for Villa in defence, which shores up their defence and makes them harder to break down as well. So, um, yeah, I think I think Villa have been really, really impressed me as a defensive unit this season. And just can't see any goals. One point seven five, the lowest I'll go for that. Though. Yeah, no, you can get one point seven five in quite a few places, as you can see. From odds checker right there. Brilliant, mate. Uh, we're going to stay in the Premier League and we'll go over to you, George. You have some insight on Southampton versus Brighton. Yeah, I do indeed. Um, I was kind of looking at this one. I mean, when you look at the records in terms of cards that they've got um, lately, you know, it's, not, it's not exactly inspiring. But So, for example, Southampton, they're only averaging around 1.54 cards per game um, at home this season. Um, and in that time, you know, the opposition in those games has seen two plus in five out of those seven. Sorry, that's against um, teams in the bottom five. Um, you know, they're unbeaten and, and scored uh, and they lost nine against Brighton. Uh, but they also make the most tackles at home uh, per game than any other side in the league. They make around 20.2 tackles per game, which is, is an awful lot. And talk, I mean, there's been a lot said about Brighton lately, you know, how they've broken the XG model. I mean, if you look at their XG, they should be battling out for a place in next season's Champions League. But... Lo and behold, they're actually sort of fighting to make sure they don't get dragged into a relegation battle. But um, yeah, they're only averaging um, 0.85 cards per game away from home, so under one. They've only seen two or more um, in two out of six away games against sides in the bottom half. And in that time, the opposition's seen two or more in three out of those six. But yeah, they've got no wins in their in their last six and, and no, clean sheet, no clean sheet in their last three, sorry. Um but you look at the game that happened in the reverse fixture with uh, Southampton, there were 60 booking points. Um, and just with the way that Brighton play, because all Brighton are missing is a finisher, a natural finisher, someone who can put the ball in the back of the net and you see them fly at the table. Because, you know, they do play some really good expansive football. Um, you know, they're effective, they create chances. Um, but that's what they're missing. And I think they're going to dominate the ball against Southampton. I think they're still going to play well. They're still going to do well. And uh, Southampton, you'll see a high line for, for their tackles as well. I was actually looking at them to have 19 or, or more tackles, but the price just wasn't there. It's been kind of hammered in. Um, so, no, the bet I was looking for is, is Brighton to see two. Or, I was looking for Brighton to see two or more cards because I think Southampton are very good at stealing the ball quickly off the opposition. You look at them during uh, the game against Man City. I mean, yeah, Man City are bottom of the discipline table this season. They don't they don't commit very car, many card-worthy challenges, but the way that Southampton pressed them and won the ball back quickly off them to try and get on that counter, to try and quickly press uh, and break towards goal. I see Brighton, particularly with the likes of Lewis Dunk at the back, I can see Brighton getting at least a couple of bookings. Um, and the referee, Stuart Atwell, now he's got the highest cards per game average than any ref in the Premier League. It's uh, 4.19 cards per game. And that wouldn't look out of place in, in La Liga or Serie A. Um, he's awarding on average 22.8 free kicks per game as well. And I just think the way Southampton press and win that ball back so quickly with that high tackle line, you know, Brighton are going to be caught off. Brighton are going to be caught off guard more than once, and I don't think Stuart Atwell is going to let anything go. He's just not that sort of ref. He, early doors he might do, but he's going to pick them off. Um, so I'm expecting the second half Brighton to pick up a couple. So the better that I'm going with is I really like Brighton to see two or more cards. And there to be under four goals in the game because these two just similar to what Nigel was saying with uh, you know Newcastle and Villa earlier that they don't these two don't see that many goals um, whatsoever. I mean I was again looking at the sort of stats beforehand in uh, the last six out of eight meetings between the pair there's been under two and a half goals. Um, so I'm just looking at this one I, I don't see any way that there's four goals in this game and I see Brighton picking up two plus cards and that's at eleven to ten. Um, and personally, I think it should be closer to five to six or closer to, to 1.83 personally. So I think that's overpriced. And I think that price will drop uh, as we get closer to kickoff. But um, yeah, so for me, my, my best bet for the Southampton Brighton game is Brighton to see two cards and there to be under four goals in the game. Yeah, and two, 11 to 10 would be 2.1, I believe. Yeah. So I think like... it's a majorly, majorly wrong in the price personally. All right, awesome, mate. Love the strong opinion. Let's uh, move on back to Nigel. Staying in the Premier League once again, Manchester United versus West Ham. Uh, yeah, um, I give West Ham a chance here. I really do. 
um, because of what we've seen tonight. I, I fancy West Ham anyway, but I think that uh, Manchester United now have got a huge match in Milan on Thursday night in the uh, Europa League. How, after the how did the Manchester United game finish up? It finished 1 1, but they conceded in the 92nd minute. So they were 1 0 up and cruising and they let, let the goal in. And now the tie is massively, massively off. And that's and, an away uh, goal. It's an away goal, yeah. And they've got to go to Milan on Thursday. And yeah. I think now I, I gave I gave West Ham a, a, a chance before that match. You know, West Ham is well, I thought West Ham have been absolutely brilliant. I thought they played really, really well against Leeds last time out. Prior to that, they gave Man City a proper good game. You know, I know Man City got beat by Manchester United, but Matt West Ham were, were brilliant. Um Antonio's fit, um the doubt whether he would play his fit. Uh, that midfield of Chuchek and uh, Declan Rice is, is, is Chuchek's probably been one of the, probably the best players in the Premier League this season. Defensively, they look solid. Craig Dawson is a great signing as well from set pieces. They're a massive danger from set pieces, West Ham. Creswell from set pieces is, is, is deadly. And I think Man United could be gettable here. Uh, prior to the Man City game, Man, Man United, hang on, they drew 1 1 tonight. Prior to the Man City game, they played three games where he never scored. Uh, they obviously got beaten earlier in the season at home by Crystal Palace. They got beaten in home in the season, the season by uh, they got beaten by Sheffield United. And if you look at West Ham, that they they only ever lose now to the big guys. And I know I'm not sort of enhancing my argument here, but they only have lost this season to Liverpool, Man United in the in the league and the cup. But that was after extra time. And they only and they lost to Chelsea as well. You know, they so beat Tottenham they have, if you count them. Yeah, but yeah, but when was, yeah, but they only lose to the big side. Years ago, West Ham would be a side that would you know, get beat by Burnley or they'd get beat by Southampton. They're not like that anymore. They're, they're no easy target. West Ham are a proper football team, probably the most improved football team. If you looked at people's ratings of football teams at the start of the season to where they are now, West Ham would probably be the biggest movers on the season. They're, they're rightly mm. in their position. They're rightly where they are. And if you look for them player for player, they're a bloody good team. And uh, they won't fear going to Man United. And I feel that uh, Manchester United seem to raise their game against the big boys and then just think, that, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether they sort of believe that they can just turn up and beat the, the, type, the size. And if they take any complacency to West Ham, I, 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 don't, I don't buy that. They've, they've, they've only won one of their last five home matches, uh, Man United as well. Uh, and West Ham, their away form is fantastic. And the, and the match against Man City, I thought they were ex exceptional. And given tonight's game, that now that game against Milan is a huge, huge game. Solskjaer's got a lot of injuries. There's no Rashford. Um, you know, he's, he's got to chop and change a few players around. He's very heavily reliant on Fernandes for goals, who can go missing in games. However great he is, and he's a great player, he's got an awful lot of penalties, but he can go missing in games. And I feel in that midfield role, he could get out-muscled. Out Outmuscled by Tuchek, outmuscled by Declan Rice, because they're, they're a very big side. And I like West Ham here on the Asian handicap plus a half. Um, obviously, we're effectively laying Manchester United, so we're saying that Man United are worth taking on. And you could get around about, I saw today, it was about 2.2. I don't know if it's still that price. Uh, let's have a look what price it is now. So you're um, saying West Ham plus a half? Yeah, so so it's, it's now around 2.05, is it, West Ham? Yeah, you can get 2. Point, I'll just get up on my screen here. You can get 2.07 at Daffabet and SBO, but they're the Asians, I guess. And then you've got 2. 2. 2.04 a lot of places, 2.05 at Bet Victor. Well, we might be, you might be better off to lay uh, West Ham on the on the on the exchange if you're able to lay West Ham because I think West Ham on the exchanges are something uh, sorry lay Man United on the exchanges I think Man United are around about 1.91. So if you're laying 1.91 you're getting 2.09 on that market. So if you can if you can lay uh, Manchester United I think Man United are worth taking on this weekend. That's that's the, the cut and chase of it. Um I think that um I don't I, I think they'll get turned over for second place. I think Chelsea will overtake them for second place and I feel that yeah I feel that Manchester United are probably not as good as everyone the league position makes them out. And I think the scoreline against Manchester City yeah. flattered them a little bit. And I, and I think they're vulnerable against sides um, who, they, who they, they think they could just turn up and, and beat. And I think West Ham are very, very, are nowhere near uh, an easy target at the moment. 
I couldn't yeah. agree more. Like if you look, at, especially when you look at that, um, a couple of things really. That a the Manchester derby, yes, on our bias, I suppose City, but look at it objectively. You know, United played very well. They did exactly what they needed to do, but they still conceded twenty three shots on goal. They were just very lucky that City couldn't hit a barn door with a machine gun that day. And also, if you look at the number of points that obviously United have got in seasons gone by, that total's only good enough to get them around fifth or sixth. So I think, if anything, it just the way people are saying how much they've improved. Yes, they have. But I think it's been overdone somewhat in that it's more so I think other teams have kind of just regressed and not playing as well, whereas United have just been consistent as who they are and as what they've been. So it looks like they're doing much better than what they actually are. I mean, that's kind of my opinion. There's no doubt in the quality there, but I think the market as well overestimates them at times. Well, I think the thing is with it is that people will look at Man United and see five to six and think, oh, I think you'll, you'll attract the, the public money. Because people yeah. see Man United at five to six at home against West Ham and think, "Oh, they'll beat them." And I think it's—I think it's a price that the public money will come in. But I think that so when you break this game down, and I think that I definitely believe that that late goal for you, uh, for AC Milan has really meant that that time. And it, it, it's whether whether Solskjaer is prioritising the league over the over the cup. You look at Arsenal; they're prioritising the cup. That's it. The Europa League is what they're prioritising. Does Solskjaer yeah. think, well, you know what, we can still come second, we can still get a top four. But if Man United play like some like they have in the league, they can suddenly slip out of the top four. And um I think it's a dangerous thing to do. But I do believe that West Ham are very, very undervalued as a football side. And I think if you look at them player for player, I think they're um they're quality, quality, quality side. And they're big, they're very, very big side. Yeah, they yeah. can out they can they can out muscle Man United. Fernandez could be just Steamrollers. Well, Suchek's turned into David Moyes Fellaini, isn't he? The one that, like he had at Everton. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. the sort of role that Suchek did. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, and lowest odds you take there, Nigel? Uh, not much more than that. I mean, they were 2.15, I think, today, or 2.1. Um, I'd lay Man United anything around about 1.9, 1.91. So you're effectively betting West Ham and the draw around about 2.08, 2.07, something like that. 2.72, anything around that, anything above 2.05, anything even money, I would, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm effectively becoming the bookmaker and people have been Man United with me at even money and I wouldn't want to lay Man United at even money. But if someone wanted to bet Man United at 5 to 6 or, or 1.85 or 1.9, I'm happy to take the odds on Man United and get odds against with the draw and uh, West Ham. Yeah, well, you can get 2.05 in a lot of places, so hopefully people can snap that up by the time this comes out. Uh, George, mate, we'll, uh, we'll head over to Spain, mate. Getafe versus Atletico Madrid. Yeah, so look at this one. I mean, oh, you know what I'm like? I absolutely love um, Getafe for cards, but unfortunately, you know, it doesn't take long for kind of people to cotton on and bookies to cotton on when they're such high numbers. So I couldn't really find any value in terms of the card markets, but there is a bet I really like uh, within this one. And again, I think it is overpriced, but at least it was this morning when I when I took it. Um, so yeah, Getafe home to Atletico Madrid, and I'm going for Atletico to get the win simply because Getafe are coming into an even just a horrendous run of form right at the wrong time. You know, last season they were pushing I think for Champions League spots, and and now they're looking more like they're in danger of being relegated. Um, uh, yeah, they've, they've just been awful. They've conceded first in five of their, their last six. And again, like with head-to-heads, sometimes there's things that you just can't ignore. Like, I don't want to put too much credence on it, but Getafe haven't scored against Atletico in their last 19 attempts. And it's just ridiculous. They're just awful against Atletico. It's kind of, they are a bogey side, if you like. Um, you know, again, whereas Atletico, look at them just this season in the 13 games they've played um, against teams in the lower half this season. They've won 10 of them. You know, obviously, I know they recently had that double header against uh, Levante and drew one and, and lost, but they were largely unlucky in those games as well. And but just the state of Getafe at the moment, I just don't see them getting a result against Atletico. You know, they've they've collected I think four points from the last twenty four available. Um, yeah, so they are looking like relegation candidates. Um, and it just doesn't look like I don't think there's any way that that changes here and that they can kind of get that springboard to to save themselves, Just certainly not against Atletico Madrid. You know, they're on the verge of uh, potentially getting their 11th top flight title. Suarez is in good form. Um, but also it's the price for this one that made me really like it in that 
Atletico Madrid were evens to to go away and win this game, which I didn't quite get because I have them closer at four to five, so around one point eight rather than two. Um, so again, I'm not sure, one hundred percent sure what the prices are are now, but yeah, when I looked at it this morning, and the price that I took was Atletico Madrid to win away at Getafe at evens, and I think you'll find that that price drops as well just before kickoff. Yeah, I mean, I can see a lot of Asian money coming in on odds checking now for um, for Atletico. They are you still get twos on the exchanges, which is nice. I'll have a look at. Um, I haven't even got it up on trade, mate, but I can have a quick look and see if I can see if there's anything better. Because that, well, those that's you know longer odds than the were there this morning. So obviously, money as you said, money's already coming in for it, and because it definitely shouldn't have been been evens this morning. Yeah, I get 205. I've got no idea where that is. Super bet. I mean, if anyone bets with super bet, there you go. Uh, but I mean, there's multiple places where you can get twos or higher. So, um, mm. yeah, it looks widely available, especially on the exchanges, yeah. which will probably be the most popular place for people yeah, listening. Yeah. So, all right. Of course, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's why, like I said, I think that'll be going off a lot shorter come, come kick off and. Yeah, I just don't see how Getafe pick up any kind of result against Atletico. They're absolutely abysmal. If you've watched any of their games lately, it's just no direction. They're just awful. That's the only way I can describe it. Where you know Atletico, there's no there's no way Getafe are going to stop the likes of Suarez and, and those kind of players just running right. It's just I don't I don't see how it happens. They might frustrate them for a bit, but Atletico will get the win. I looked at that game today, George, and I was agreeing with you. But my own, and I looked at um, Atletico to win to nil. And um, yeah. the only thing that put me off, which um, was a slight problem, I know the money's come from as well, is that Let's Go Madrid play Chelsea on Tuesday night in the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that was my only concern of this game. I thought, yeah, and I could see why they were priced up at probably the price they are, because there mm. is that obviously that that the bookmakers' philosophy is that when teams obviously play in the Champions League the week before, especially big games like that, and it's so finally poised that match and I think whoever wins that game will think they could possibly go on and potentially win the Champions League when you think there's only probably Man City was, or Bayern Munich could, could probably win it so that would be my only slight reservation See I, I did think that but my thinking is you know the way that Real Madrid and Barca are at the moment Atletico will do anything to win that La Liga title back they'll do anything to win that and I whilst I think you know in terms of priorities they're more likely to win La Liga at the moment than they are the champion. I'm not saying that they won't, but at the moment, winning that La Liga title, I think, is kind of their priority. So, again, it's, it's my personal opinion, but I think they're going to be focusing on getting those points. Those are probably three points that are available to them that they should be getting relatively easily and take another step towards that title and then worry about Chelsea. I think they're going to go full strength in this one and be worrying about this one. So, that was kind of my full process on it. No, right. I, I agree. I, I just, I just, it was, that's probably the why they were the price they are. That was, that's, yeah. That's what yeah, I yeah. thought. No, I agree. You know, Agreed. I hate, yeah. I hate betting teams weeks before big Champions League yeah, yeah. final or semi final. Just don't like it. Yeah. But it's probably a similar story to Manchester United. Like you think they will probably put the the league in front of European. Although you know it's great to win a Europa League. It's great to win the Champions League. Like. If you've got a chance there to uh, to win the La I think, Liga, I think, I think the difference is with Man City though in the, in, the, in, the, in the Premier League is that they've got a bigger squad. So sorry, I was talking out. about United. Oh, they're not in the Champions League. <laughs> yeah, well. like, <laughs> Alex, George, and Lionel. But we've not with, with Man City. The trouble is, if it was like the trouble with at, at, at Real Madrid is that they're by 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 Spanish and by European big club standards, they've got a very small squad. And they're heavily reliant on Suarez. Heavily reliant on Suarez. And if they rest Suarez or put him on the bench, then that price will drift to stagery. Now, you, in play, you can bring him on and, and he's, he'll probably score and they'll win one nil. But that, you know, that's the difference between a team like a, a Bayern Munich or a Manchester City who can, who yeah. can rest players in, in these kind of games. That, that was, I mean, I agree with George completely. I think they're probably value, but that was the only reason I, I was slightly yeah, worried yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, fair. All right, love it, gents. Uh, Nigel, back to you, mate. Crystal Palace versus West Brom. I mean, mate, it's it's bad enough when you go to League Two. This is probably, you know, this is right up there in terms of going to a, just a disgusting match. It's and, what it's can, not, 
you, you can win you can win matches ugly, can't you? You don't have to be it's, it is so weird. Matches, it right? is the weirdest thing to see Crystal Palace. Just looking at them from a betting perspective here, Crystal Palace with the number two as their odds. Like I don't think I've ever ever seen Crystal Palace go into a game favourite. Well, not for a long time. And, and mm. if, you, if you, you look at the goal XG, in their last fifteen Premier League matches, only one game their expected goals was more than one. <laughs> uh, so that shows you how bad they are. Um, I mean, already, already next season they're the side that. Um, that you're looking at already, aren't you? Thinking they're going to get relegated next season. Yeah. How they, how they haven't, how they haven't been got in, sucked into a relegation battle at the moment, I do not know. But they're playing West Brom. West Brom come to town. Sam Allardyce goes back to his former club, and again, it's not surprised to me that I'm going to be anti goals in this game. Uh, Crystal Palace at home in the last three games, they haven't scored a game. They haven't scored a goal. Nil nil against Man United. Nil nil against Fulham. Uh, nil three against Burnley. West Brom. Uh, uh, slightly improving in recent weeks, but it's too little too late, really. Their last six matches have all gone under two and a half goals. Their last five matches have gone under one and a half goals. Um, their last four games, two of them have been one nil, and the other two have been nil nil. Both sides coming on the back of a nil nil draw uh, in their last matches. Yeah, Crystal Palace last home game was a nil nil, like I say, back to back home nil games. Um, obviously, if you look at this, you're going to look under two and a half goals. But under two and a half goals is very short. It's like 1.62. So my way of getting against goals and, and still sort of side at unders is to take both teams to score as a no here. Because I feel that one goal will be enough to win it. Um, probably towards West Brom. I think West Brom have got much more of a need to win. And obviously, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, need to win. But um, um, the fact the data backs out as well, that Palace do not create do not score, do not create chances. So in a better value for money way to get against goals, instead of betting under two and a half goals, I'm betting both teams to score as a no, which is 1.86. So 1.86 you can get both teams to score no, or 1.62 when you consider the last five matches that um, West Brom have played, both teams have been scored for as a no. I'm amazed that um, money for yes uh, in that market. I'm amazed that that's going. Uh, I know Sahar's back for um, Palace, which obviously helps them a lot. But um, I think I think one goal in this game against two very very low scoring sides, the XG for both sides is very very low, and uh, going again in my theme of low scoring games in the Premier League. So yeah, I'm going to go uh, no in this game at one point eight six. Yep. Yeah. All right. Awesome, mate. You can get one point eight five for the Paddy Power too. So. Uh, hopefully that uh, that hangs around for us all. Last game, George, mate, you're going to take us to a, a place that I would say we finish regularly on the podcast. You, you're taking us to Italy. Yeah, again, it's my favourite place. But uh, yeah, so this one is Lazio, then host to Crotone. Um, it's an interesting one, this one, because, you know, Lazio started off um, this one within, I think it was an unbeaten seven game start to the year and were, you know, looking in good form in, in that chase for Europe. But they've gone off the boil since and so they've lost three of their last four league games. But to be fair, I think slightly too much has been made of that considering, you know, three those three losses came against top three sides. So, you know, they're very good teams. Um, but I was looking at this one. Lazio have seen, they're averaging three and a half cards per game at home this season. They're the second most ill-disciplined side in Serie A. Um, when they've been playing teams that are currently in the bottom five, they've seen two or more cards in four out of six. But uh, in the two that they didn't, they were both played away. They've seen the majority of their cards at home. Um, the opposition of, in those games as well, seen two plus in five out of six. Um, but like I said, yeah, they, they've lost their last three, but I think they're going to bounce back here. Um, Crotone slap bang bottom of the league is looking like survival was probably a bit, a bit of a stretch for them. To be truth be told, the quality is just not there. They're very inconsistent and just just looking at them, you know, I think they I think they're without they're the only side without an, an away win in the Serie A this season. And they're, they're definitely not gonna gonna get it here. But they are the fourth most fouled team per game in Serie A. So, you know, they do draw a lot of fouls from their from their opponents. And obviously they're going away to a side that see a ridiculous amount of cards at home. But yeah, they've conceded first in seven of their last eight games. They've not had a clean sheet in any of their last 14 matches. 
Uh, and there's been more than two and a half goals in nine out of their last 10 matches as well. But the bet I'm going for is Lazio to see to score two goals um, and they're, and Lazio to see two plus cards as well. And that's at 10 to 11. Um, again, I, always tr- I need to get hung of trying to convert fractional odds into decimals because what are you doing that as, as a decimal? Go on, Nigel, you should go with this. What is it? What was, what was, what was the price? He was asleep, mate. <laughs> you, had me on mute. I you, you had us all on mute. I couldn't hear. Yeah, I had, I, I had to mute. Oh, so can you not hear George when I put you on mute? No, I couldn't hear nothing. Oh, fuck off! You're lying. Oh, you right, missed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was the odds? What was the odds? Ten, to, ten to eleven. It's one point nine one. There you go. One point nine one. We'll go with that. But uh, yeah, I, I still think that's that's far too short. You know, that's landed in Crotone's last. Four out of their well, four of their last five away games, um, their opposition has scored two goals and seen two or more cards. And with Lazio, you know, Crotone is just awful defensively. Lazio are going to create chances. They're going to get a win here by, I'd say, by at least two clear goals. Um, and they're going to pick up cards. You know, Crotone they are they are fouled a lot regardless of who they play. They've played the likes of Juventus, you know, all the big sides Inter, and they've drawn cards from them. Um, and with Lazio being so ill-disciplined, there's no way that they're get, getting away from this one without bookings, particularly when the ref is uh, Antonio Rapuano. Um, top marks of pronunciation there, I know. And he's he's averaging around 5.5 cards per game uh, this season and more than 32 free kicks per game on average. So I think he's going to be blowing his whistle quite a lot. At least two Lazio players are going into his book um, and Lazio, they're going to score goals as well. So yeah, Lazio two plus goals and two plus cards at 1.91, according to Nigel. Thank you, Nigel. Sorry, I have to mute you sometimes, Nigel, because I don't know what you do when George talks. But there's just so much rustling. There's just a lot of rustling going on, and I can't hear you. I actually can't hear you. I'm joking. I'm white. I got you. Oh, how did you not see that one coming? Uh, I'm in there. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's so embarrassing. Oh, you've fallen for the oldest trick in the book. Oh, man. Unbelievable. But I mean, what do you do while George talks? Because there's just so much noise. I just write down so I can so I can do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, that's what I did when Knight went zero and three, and I made a killing. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. No, here we uh, go. Here we go. Rarity, it's a very rarity. Listen, uh... put me on mute again, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Well, mate, before I put you on mute, why don't you give us your best bet of the weekend, eh? Got to have to go for the uh, under two and a half goals in the Villa Newcastle game tomorrow. Newcastle Villa. About those front, those three players for Newcastle in a relegation battle. Villa without Grealish. And I forgot to say that the last 10 matches in this fixture have all got under as well, as well as the game earlier in the season, which was 2-0. I think got to be under. So. Cool. And George? Well, it's between the Atletico win and the, the Lazio one, but I'm going to go with uh, with the Lazio to score two or more goals and see two or more cards as well. 